What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some Mechanics and Materials. So let's solve this problem here. So we're given a solid shaft with a diameter of 0.75 inches, and we have free rotation at A and F. So our goal is to find the maximum shear stress in between B and C, and in between D and E. So let's go ahead and get started. So my diagram is a little hard to see, so hopefully the image is doing a good job. But I also drew this like uh, flat view, where you can kind of just see which ones are looking which way. So we're going to be using our two equations. Our shear stress is equal to our internal torque times our distance over the polar moment of inertia. And then our polar moment of inertia is equal to this for a solid shaft. So first of all, we need to find the torque in our sections that we're looking for. So let's find the torque in BB, BC first. So torque in BC, what is that going to be equal to? Well, if you go by, it's kind of like taking the shear, right? you're gonna basically add them up. So from A to B, there's no forces acting yet. So we know that our torque is gonna to be zero there. But then when we go to BC, we have this one force acting here. We're basically taking a cut. So we're taking a cut here, and we see that it's 35 pounds foot pushing this way. So our torque in there has to be 35, uh, not 30, 35 pound feet. So then if we wanna to go to DE, we can either keep going down the line or we can start at the other end. So let's keep going down the line. So looking at CD, first of all, 35, but then minus 20, so we're at 15. Now we go to DE, we got 35, minus 20, minus 40. Uh, it's gonna be negative 25, right? So yeah, we get negative 25, this is our torque there. So torque CD is equal to negative 25. It doesn't really matter which one you make the positive or negative because we're looking for max torque in this case. So that's why I'm not really accounting for that. But if you also, oh, this is 25 or 35? One of these numbers is wrong. This is supposed to be a 25. Yeah, but you could also go the other way, right? You could start here, you get zero, and then you get 25 for DE. Same thing, go down, you would get the same numbers. That's just as long as these forces cancel each other out. So we have them in pound feet, but we won't have them in pound inches because we're gonna find basically PSI as our unit. So to convert from pound feet to pound inches, you multiply by 12. In that case, you're going to get 420 pound inches. And then for this one, you're going to get 300. I'm just going to make it positive because it doesn't matter what direction it's facing. We're just looking for the maximum shear stress. Okay. So then we need to find what our polar moment of inertia is, right? If we want to use this equation, we found the numerator, but we need to find what the polar moment of inertia is. So polar moment of inertia, let's use the equation pi over 2. C is diameter, or it's not diameter. It's radius. So if you want to take radius, we're going to take half of that diameter, 0 0.375. Raise that to the fourth power. Plug that in. You get 0 0.03106 inches to the fourth. Okay, so then now all we need to do to find the fact some shear stress is plug it into this equation. So the shear stress, let's start with BC. We have our torque, 420 rho, which is distance, so that's again, or diameter, not diameter, so radius, 375, and then over j, 0 0.03106. Do this, you got into our PC, is 5070 psi. Now let's find the shear moment, or the shear stress, I don't know if I'm saying torque or not anymore, but shear stress in CD. I ran into the same thing, we have that 300, same 0 0.375 over 0 0.03106. Do this, you get 3,620 PSI. And there's applying answers for both of them. All right, not a very tricky question. Uh, I, you'll find that this unit is very similar to the last unit. Uh, yeah, pretty fun, okay. So if you have any questions, ask in the comments below. Check out the rest of my playlist to see more mechanics and materials videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for your support. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.